Good evening, board and community. Uh, it's an exciting time for our school district. Uh, tonight we have uh, three board members who are going to be sworn in. Uh, invite Judge Sherry Moore to come up and uh, do these swearing ins for us. All right, so first I will swear in Ty Clack, your family wife. Say your name, and then I'll read the oath. And I'll say, yes, I do. And at the end, you say, I do what I will. Um, affirmative <laughs> education. So you raise your right hand. I, I a citizen of Jackson County, and being an employee of the Jackson County Board of Education and the recipient of public funds for services rendered as such employee. Do hereby solemnly swear and affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the United I do further solemnly swear or affirm that I will well and truly faithfully discharge all of the duties required of me by law as a member of the Board of Education of Jackson County to the best of my ability. I do further solemnly swear or affirm that I am not the holder of any unaccounted for public money due this state or any political subdivision or authority thereof that I am not the holder of any office of trust under the government of the United States, nor of either of the several states, nor of any foreign state, and that I am otherwise qualified to hold said office according to the Constitution and the laws of Georgia, and that I will support the constitutions of the United States and of this state, and that I have met the residency requirements of this office, so help me God. I. Ty Clark. A citizen of Jackson County and being an employee of the Jackson County Board of Education and the recipient of public funds for services rendered as such employee, do hereby solemnly swear and affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of Georgia. So help me. Know. I do. All right, wonderful. All right, hold on, let me get you that. I, a citizen of Jackson County and being an employee of the Jackson County Board of Education and the recipient of public funds for services rendered as such employee, do hereby solemnly swear and affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of Georgia. I do further solemnly swear or affirm that I will truly and faithfully discharge all of the duties required of me by law as a member of the Board of Education of Jackson County to the best of my ability. I do further solemnly swear and affirm that I am not the holder of any unaccounted for public money to this state or any political subdivision or authority thereof, that I am not the holder of any office of trust under the government of the United States, nor either of the several states, nor of any foreign state, and that I am otherwise qualified to hold said office according to the Constitution and laws of Georgia, and that I will support the constitutions of the United States and of this state and that I have met the residency requirements of this office, so help me God. I, oh, a citizen of Jackson County and being an employee of the Jackson County Board of Education and the recipient of public funds for services rendered as such employee, do so hereby solemnly swear and affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of Georgia, so help me God. Thank you. Thank you. Let me get you to sign. If you don't mind.
citizen of Jackson County and being an employee of the Jackson County Board of Education and the recipient of public funds for services rendered as such employee, do hereby solemnly swear and affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of Georgia. I do further solemnly swear and affirm that I will well and truly faithfully discharge all of the duties required of me by law as a member of the Board of Education of Jackson County to the best of my ability. I do further solemnly swear or affirm that I am not the holder of any unaccounted for public money to this state or any political subdivision or authority thereof, that I am not the holder of any office of trust under the government of the United States, nor of either of the several states, nor of any foreign state, and that I am otherwise qualified to hold said office according to the Constitution and laws of Georgia, and that I will support the Constitution of the United States and of this state, and that I have met the residency requirements of this office, so help me God. I, citizen of Jackson County, and in being an employee of Jackson County Board of Education, and the recipient of public funds for services rendered as such employee, do hereby solemnly swear and affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of Georgia, so help me God. Judge Moore, we greatly appreciate the partnership and how every time we need you to help us out with this, you do a tremendous job. So thank you so much. Uh, I want to introduce board. Mr. Brett Irvin uh, is joined us uh, as our new director of technology. Uh, excited about having you, Brett. Uh, thank you for being here this evening. Um, board members, as you know, each year, uh, Board of Educations in Georgia have to uh, sign a code of ethics uh, approval. It's um, comprised of two of our board policies, uh, and we will do that on Monday night and sign that document uh, so that we are um, legal. Um, also want to remind you our spring BOE retreat dates are going to be March the 9th and 10th, and we will be meeting in this room. So uh, those are the uh, two dates for our spring retreat. Uh, and that concludes my comments. We are back in school. Uh, this is day two. We survived the weather from yesterday. And uh, thank goodness that uh, our students got to school safely. And I want to say thank you to our transportation department, and bus drivers, and uh, bus monitors, and all of the, the people that stand outside during our car rider lines and our bus, bus pickup. Uh, they did a tremendous job of getting our kids to safely to school yesterday during that weather event. So... Uh, I want to say thank you to all those individuals. And with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Hardigree. Well, good evening and Happy New Year. One of the things that we are excited about in teaching and learning is well, we're excited about continuing to improve. And so tonight we're going to bring you a presentation, and I am going to invite Sherry Beecham, our MTSS coordinator for the district, and uh, she has with her Wendy Dillo, an instructional coach at East Jackson. And they are masters of the MTSS process, which stands for Multi-Tiered Systems of Support. And it is really the heart of school improvement and making sure that we are addressing all of the needs of every child, really looking at the whole child and using data to drive instruction. So I'm going to turn it over to them to share with you something that we're really proud of in Jackson County. Good evening. Thank you for having us to speak about something we're very passionate about. I'm Sherry Beecham. I'm the district MTSS coordinator. So this is my first year doing that. I've been in Jackson County for a long time as a teacher, but this is my first year supporting at the district level. I have Wendy Dillo. She and I have been partners in crime for a long time in the area of MTSS. She's an instructional coach at East Jackson, but she also leads MTSS there. Um, I asked Wendy to come today because she lends that practitioner 
um, lends to what we do in the schools, and I know you're going to enjoy hearing from her. So this year, our phrase to live by with MTSS is that we do not want to miss one kid in Jackson County and that we're willing to do whatever it takes to make that happen. So we want to be kid focused, um, work strongly as possible together and remove any of the barriers that our teachers feel like they have to meet the needs of our students. So MTSS is an acronym that stands for multi-tiered system of supports and it's really a system of prevention. We focus on preventing learning needs or disabilities in our students by providing good quality instruction. Uh, we focus on data and interventions that students need. We focus on academics, behavior, social emotional needs, and absenteeism. Um, MTSS is not a specific curriculum. It's not something you buy. Um, it's not old RTI or SST that we've had years ago where students were nominated as struggling students uh, or needing help. And we do not just focus on struggling students. We focus on every student in Jackson County. So the next graphic is one that I put together to show you just a little picture of what uh, MTSS is all about. It's a huge umbrella that covers a lot of things in Jackson County. You can truly see, see that it represents school improvement. Um, I wanted you to notice that RTI or response to intervention is just a small part of MTSS and that we do things like support kids with behavior, we focus on parent engagement, PBIS which is that positive behavior, um, we focus on being diagnostic and provide screeners, but our biggest focus is being preventative and um, trying to meet the needs of students before they arise. All right, so the next graphic comes from the state of Georgia. The parts that I added were on the sides where you can see that as students work their way up the tiers if needed, that's just a small part of MTSS. Um, we provide intensive levels of support. Tier two is about 15% of our students would fall into the tier two range and we provide those interventions. When students are not performing or responding to intervention at tier two, we have a three to 5% of our students that need tier three support. So you can see that um, about 80% of our students need just good quality tier one instruction, but we do have students that need more intensive support and we're willing to provide that. The middle part is really important. It shows our students with disabilities, our students that are EL, and our students that are gifted. And so it just shows you that MTSS and the tiers really service all students. So this is my favorite slide probably. Several years ago, we went to see a speaker, his name was Wayne Callender, and he is an expert in the, ear, in the field of MTSS. He shared an analogy that has stuck with us over the years. It's called bring the fire truck. And the analogy was that if you have a house that is engulfed in flames, would you take a small cup of water and douse it on the fire? No you would provide the amount of water that the fire needed to go out, right? So we use that thinking to provide the intervention that our students need. So if our students are in great need, then we provide extensive intervention. If they're in a little need, then we provide a little intervention. So that analogy has really stuck with us to provide a sense of urgency. Think about a fire, you wanna get it out fast, right? So that analogy really helps us with thinking about kids and bringing the fire truck to the right students. So that big umbrella was sort of a busy graphic and I thought about how could I make MTSS seem simple? So I thought about the three areas that are sort of the powerhouse areas for us in the area of MTSS. We screen students in the elementary, we screen them with Acadians, MAPS, and the Universal Behavior Screener. 
In the middle school, we use maps as a screener. We use that data to match what students need, the instructional model, whether they need remediation, acceleration, intervention, or behavior supports. And then we monitor to see if those interventions are working. If they are working, we're so proud. If they're not working, that's okay too, because we provide the support that students need. We want to see the growth, and we monitor to see if our students are improving. Okay, so <clears throat> like she said, MTSS, <clears throat> excuse me, at a simple view, it is not really true. It is very complex. So at the elementary level, think about that even on another playing field. It is very complex. Um, for elementary, we do look at attendance, behavior, academics, and we are also tracking it, so that progress monitoring piece. Um, for attendance, we do like to be proactive in that. We provide incentives for students who are there um, because when you miss school, you miss out. It's hard to make that up, that, um, that daily instruction that's there. It's not in the days of when I was in elementary school, like I'm gonna send all these sheets home. We are very hands-on, very conceptual learning, and you have to be there to learn. Um, we've kind of changed our language from how many days have you been absent to how many days of instruction have you missed? Because it's very important that we need to be face-to-face -face with students for them to learn. Um, discussions about attendance with our parents it allows for us to build relationships with them a lot of times we find out um, ways that we can help them problem solve is it a transportation concern or is it even just a parenting concern that maybe they need to understand how to prioritize their time to get the children up and ready to school in the morning um, we also um, are able to show when students make growth because they are there at school because a lot of times when we're looking at our data and we see that students have missed days and their, and their scores are low, well, what's your culprit? What's your root cause? And so making sure that students are there and we want them to know we want you here at school with us every day. We love to see you come in. Um, when we look at the relationships with parents as far as when we're talking about behavior and academics together, Having parents come in and meet with us 100% face-to-face conferences is so important. We get to build relationships with them, and we're also able to explain what is it that your child is expected to learn and really what growth and progress are they making, even if they're not at their grade level expectation. So making sure that we're making a um, almost like a community effort um, between our teachers, the school, the parents, MTSS is there to help bridge that gap between the school and the home. Tracking, um, we do wanna monitor what we're doing with students. So if they are in an area, let's say just for reading, for example, where we're providing an intervention for them, we wanna make sure that that intervention is working because if it's not, then we need to change what we're doing. And so like Sherry was talking about the cup of water, bringing it or bringing the fire truck, well, I don't wanna throw something different than water on that fire. I wanna make sure that what I'm using is correct. And so we are constantly checking our data, checking that progress monitoring and making changes as we go for what is best for the children. All right, so our early intervention program, um, this is where we provide intervention and remediation. These teachers are teachers who, um, <clears throat> they'll go into the classrooms and they provide instructional remediation and also they'll provide the interventions during our extended literacy time or extended learning time during ELT. We have a large EIP population in Jackson County. And so EIP and MTSS is a team concept. So we are gathering the data we look at what the needs are we communicate that to the eip teachers and they take that data and go forth and know exactly where to start with those children and what they need um, during interventions we use systematic interventions to fill the gaps but also during remediation the eip teachers are working with students on skills that help them access their grade level standards um, this could be from additional practice or it could also be from pre-teaching a skill so that they are aware of it before the teacher actually teaches it. It gives them a little head start there. So MTSS looks a little different at middle and high school because we don't collect as much skill data 
as we do in the elementary, but our problem solving process is exactly the same. For middle and high school, we use early warning data, such as historical performance in reading and math, attendance, behavior data from the current and previous years. Middle and high school also uses a spreadsheet, and we look at uh, roll-up data from elementary or previous years. Middle school also has an extended learning time where they use data to match the right group um, with a student need. The students are placed into those groups and um, they are remediated, they have interventions, and they might accelerate. We have uh, seen an increase in the number of students in Jackson County in the middle school that need extensive reading support. And we've been using the data to provide interventions that have typically been in the elementary school and our middle and high schools this year because we're meeting the needs of our students. That requires some training and a mindset shift where we're having to learn how to teach reading uh, for teachers that have not had that job before, so we're trying to uh, accommodate for the learning loss. So you've heard us talk a lot about data. Data is a huge part of MTSS, and we use what we call the spreadsheet. And we call it the spreadsheet because it's the only spreadsheet you need. Years ago as a teacher, we had a spreadsheet for everything. where They were separate. The spreadsheet brings all the data together on one, and it creates a risk score Debbie Williamson, which is our school psychologist, planned to be here tonight, but she's not feeling well. And she brought this concept to Jackson County, and we've just currently uh, continued to make it better. The spreadsheet, this is a model. Of course, it doesn't have student names on the side, so you can't see that. But it allows you to see how complex the spreadsheet is. So across the top, it shows you the uh, achievement measures that are collected. The scores that are green are scores that students have met the benchmark. The scores that are red are below benchmark, and so those were students that we would want to focus on. It calculates a risk score, so we know which kids we need to focus on in reading, which kids we need to focus on in math, which kids may have a phonics deficiency that we need to provide intervention for. And we sort this spreadsheet from our lowest student to our highest student. And we use it for a lot of different things. We use it to roster homerooms. We look at the spreadsheet for gifted placement. We look at the spreadsheet for possible learning disabilities. Um, if a teacher comes to a coordinator talking about a student, we pull the spreadsheet up so that we can see how they compare to their peers. What we have found is that a student that you might be concerned about in your classroom might not be a concern within the grade level. And so that's important to have that spreadsheet so that we can see every kid in the grade level. These spreadsheets are done three times per year and every student is listed. You can see on the right hand side where we, this is their bottom. Uh, students and you can see on the right hand side those students were already on their radar and that's what we want to see when we sort it from low to high we want to see that those lower students were ones that we already knew about and were already providing intervention for makes us feel like we're not missing a kid we know our students who need that intervention all right keep going to the I just explained all of this that was in the. <laughs> so we wanted you to walk away with four things that we don't want you to forget about MTSS. We want you to know that it's truly a comprehensive system for school improvement that hinges on not missing one child in need of support. We want you to know that our building leaders bear the responsibility of making sure that not one child in their building is missed. So they need a deep understanding of MTSS. We want you to know that Jackson County Schools is a large school district and growing by the minute. And then this is a large task not to miss one kid. 
We also want you to know that we have these systems in place and we're continuing to make them better and better so that we can identify the needs of all students. The last thing I want to say is thank you. I don't know that I've ever been asked to talk about MTSS at a board meeting and it is my pleasure to do so. It is my passion, Wendy's passion, and we'd love to ask or answer any questions that you have um, about our presentation or anything in general. that we're actually leading um, the state, for as far as I know, with that spreadsheet. Um, that was presented at my RESA, our Northeast Georgia RESA, four or five year, years ago when it first started. It blew everybody away. They couldn't believe that we were doing that much work with every single kid. We knew all that information yeah. about individual kids. So thank you for the work you do. It, it's critical, and it makes my heart feel good. Thank you very much. Um, I am, have the pleasure of seeing every school once a month to spend the day with them and we go kid by kid and look at the interventions that they have. So I just want you to know that we are looking at every student in Jackson County and we don't want one kid to not get what they need. Thank you. I'm glad you asked that. I think our students are struggling with different things. Um, the biggest one, I think we have some trauma that our students are dealing with, that we are seeing different behaviors in the classroom, and we're having to think about that differently. But we are starting some training um, for our teachers, building a mental health team at each school. And when we see the need, we're just trying to act with that sense of, sense of urgency, bringing the fire truck, you won't forget that, and just doing our very best to make sure we meet the needs and that teachers are prepared, they feel supported. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Sherry, Ms. Wendy, thank you so much for coming and presenting that this evening uh, and all the work that you do each and every day. Uh, Next on our board is HR and Student Support Services. Uh, board members, you received the personnel draft personnel report uh, this afternoon. Um, and now I'll turn it over to Ms. Todd. All right, good evening, happy new year, and welcome new board members. We're, we're excited to be here tonight and present a couple of updates from HR. Your enrollment report is here. As you can see, we are continuing to grow. Um, as of January 4th, we had 10,030 students, but Ms. Wilson told me just a second ago that by Monday, we will have 10,054. So we have students that we are in the process of getting enrolled, and that number will be a little bit higher come Monday morning. So um, the next thing I wanted to, to share with you is we just finished our open enrollment season with our employees for benefits. And I thought it would be a good time just to share with board members what options we had out there and how our employees are participating in those. Um, we had 80% of our certified staff elect to have to take state health insurance. And so those options that are available, we have three different providers with different plans under each of those. But we had a great participation rate with our certified staff. And then 73% of our classified staff elected to participate in state health. So those are very healthy numbers and we're very glad that we can offer that to our employees and the options continue to be um, pretty good that are out there that are offered. So our supplemental benefits, we use Alexander and Company to help us offer a wide variety of supplemental benefits to our employees. And we broke those down for you here um, by the number of employees that are participating out of 1,336 that are eligible. But what I wanted to point out to you are the two that are starred, the legal and identity theft are two brand new benefit options we had this year. And those came from a committee 
that we convened back last January of classified, certified staff. We brought a bunch of people in and said, tell us about our benefits package. What do you like? What do you need? Because honestly, the benefits that we offer are a part of what attracts people to our district. So the two things that came out of that were legal and identity theft. So we added those two uh, programs this year and we saw great participation, 35 and 54. The legal provides our employees with legal guidance, access to legal guidance for finance, home, real estate, um, estate planning, or anything family or personal related to a civil suit. And then the identity uh, theft benefit is protection service for credit or any type of social media or black web that's in it's through Norton and um, so we were very pleased to add those two and thankful that our employees spoke up and said that's something they wanted to see in our menu so very proud of of those offerings our shared savings has continued to be a great um, incentive for our classified employees. So it's my understanding looking back that this program started back in 2017 and we offer our classified employees the option to participate. So we are reimbursed or we get funding from the state for certified employees for benefits but we don't for our classified so that is a board of education expense. So we offer this program to our classified staff and we say if you've got another option, if your spouse has benefits um, and you are electing to have those instead of this, then we would like to give you an incentive to not take the benefits here because you do have something else available to you. So we currently have 34 employees participating in this program and you can see the savings that that has yielded for our district. Um, we give eligible employees 3,600 a year. They get that in two payments. But as you can see, that has yielded a very huge savings because otherwise we would be paying the 945 every month for those employees for our portion of their benefits. So huge savings for the district. Um, we continue to see more people elect that. And so we're very thankful that the board continues to support that offering. And last but not least, I would be remiss if I stood up here and did not acknowledge these two ladies that are going to kill me for their picture being on this slide. <laughs> but Miss Amanda West and Miss Shannon Kendricks are our benefits team. And they are amazing teammates. They scheduled one day during the three-week open enrollment period where they were available to help employees. Um, they offered customer service on how to log in, how to make sure you're selecting what you need to select, and even having them just feel confident that they're making the right decision. Um, they are responsible for all of the information I presented this evening, and they've always made time for our employees, and I'm continually impressed with how just their customer service and how they make time for our employees and just that they make sure that everyone that they encounter is treated with respect and compassion and that's important in our in our field so they get rave reviews they have to have some hard conversations sometimes when people are dealing with medical issues or needing life insurance if something happens and so Jackson County School System is fortunate to have these two ladies, and so I want to make sure it's very clear that they're the ones doing the hard work, and we are so glad that they're on our team. So, any questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Todd. Mr. Hooper, NPR. Good evening, Mr. Hall. Thank you for letting me be here. I'll keep that tradition going. <laughs> uh, well, good evening, uh, Mr. Clack. Welcome. Uh, glad to have you here with us. Uh, I hope you all had a great holiday season. Um, a reminder that during Monday night's uh, board meeting, we'll have the, the video highlight. Uh, I think that'll be our third uh, we'll have for you to show you uh, what happened in the month of December in our buildings. Uh, it was only, what, 18 days in the month for break, but it was still a lot to, to put into a video. So 
Like Dr. Brown said, our students came back uh, to uh, school on Wednesday. Uh, record number of students in our building, so uh, we're busy and uh, a, lot, a lot of great things to cover. Um, last month in our work session, I discussed uh, how district administration was preparing to send out the letters uh, to notify our middle school families of what middle school they were going to go to. Um, those letters were sent out the Friday before winter break. Uh, we sent an email communication to the families on that Tuesday before winter break as well. Uh, if you've never prepared 1,400 letters, uh, got them printed out, uh, got them in the proper stacks, um, and uh, put them in envelopes, well, it's quite the process. Um, and it was a total team effort. And uh, in the spirit of Miss Todd, I want to thank several people who stepped up, because at one point our machine that folded them and put in the envelopes went down, and 620 letters for Legacy Null were done by hand by a group of individuals who not one time complained. In fact, came to my office and said, hey, the machine went down, let us help. Um, so I want to thank... Ms. Donna Whitehead, uh, Ms. Sierra Roberts, Ms. Emily West, uh, Ms. Aaron Bryant, those two specifically saved me. I was going to type in all the addresses, and they showed me how Excel worked, uh, so I marked that up as a learning tool. Um, Ms. Amanda Hewell and I, we sweet-talked the uh, machine and got it working for the West Jackson Middle School letters, uh, so that saved us a bunch of time. Uh, and uh, our work-based learning student, Ms. Lucy Galley, who's a senior at Jackson County High School, uh, was sitting right there uh, putting the envelopes together as well. So those uh, ladies should be commended for their hard work. Uh, it was a total team effort. Uh, without None of this would have been without possible without the data of where these students live and where they're going to go to school. So I want to thank Ms. Martha Wilson again for that. Um, she, got it, she got it right, and uh, it was a, a relief to get those sent off to our families. Uh, the letters not only highlighted what middle school they were going to go to, but the House Bill 251 process for if they wanted to attend the other middle school. Um, so I really out, outlined that. Uh, we're in the process of accepting those requests right now from January 1 through January 31st. Um, to date right now, we've had eight come in, uh, four for Legacy Knoll, four for West Jackson Middle School. So uh, that's uh, all we've received so far. Uh, today we announced the plans for pre-K registration for 2023-24. Uh, we did that on our social media uh, a couple hours ago, uh, updated the website. Uh, for That'll be uh, from February 1 through February 28th. Uh, the, the lottery drawing will be Tuesday, March 14th. Uh, families can go to the website, jacksonschoolsga.org slash pre-K, uh, for more information on that. Um, Moving forward, uh, for public relations, it's our goal, uh, as always, to uh, continue to uh, be transparent with our community and our staff. Uh, we received the feedback from our stakeholders and, and our staff and families, and uh, they've been pretty appreciative of what we've been able to do uh, this year uh, in providing all the, the transparency with our changes. Uh, we're going to continue to do that. Uh, we're going to continue to find new ways to do it. Um, and continue to, to try to lead uh, school systems in the state of Georgia and how we give the information. Uh, last month, I, I told you some social media and website numbers. Uh, in the 90-day period, uh, Mr. Clax knew, so I wanted to share those with him uh, and the board. So in the last 90 days, people want information. 103,387 people have been reached through Facebook on our district page alone, uh, 20,000 of which saw our post and then clicked on our page. Um, they, want, they want information. Uh, on Instagram, 33,321. And uh, last month, in the month of December, I probably credit to uh, the school calendar coming out, and people wanted to look at that, uh, but we had 41,498 people go to our website. Almost, um, and that's a record uh, since Jackson County's had a website. So uh, I credit that probably they want to see the calendar. Uh, but uh, any questions? No? All right, thank y'all. Uh, Mr. Hooper, I appreciate you bringing back up the calendar. Uh, <laughs> Ms. Dodge? Good evening, board. And I'm going to uh, follow up with what everybody else said. Happy New Year. I hope you all enjoyed some great holiday time with family and friends and are ready to join us back on the second half of the school year, which should be fun because this is the fun part. This is the budget time and staffing time, so we've got a lot ahead of us. Um, and we also had a lot of amazing, great financial things actually happen during the break. So I have some um, really interesting things to share with you tonight. Um, our SPLOS is, is good. It's right in line with our average, uh, which is about 1.1 million. Um, of course, I have no doubt that next month we will see a pretty, um, pretty significant deposit since that will be a lot of the Christmas and holiday shopping that will be included in that one. But it, we're still above... Um, year-to-year -year comparison and um, our our overall SPLOS balance is almost 20 million dollars and that's still with money going out on Legacy Knoll so SPLOS is looking very good and um, for the 
for the month, we are right in line with our expenditures. We are at 50% of the year complete, and we are right at 50% of our um, annual expenditures spent to this point. And as you can see, our revenue, we are actually at um, 61%, which is wonderful. So that just goes to show that we got um, a significant amount of our tax deposits in over the holiday break. And you'll see when we look at the next slide, our fund balance is right back up to where we expect to see it at this time of the year. It's still a little bit lower than it was at this point last year, but again, um, we usually get some more significant deposits after the holidays when, <laughs> when people still have payments trickling in. So um, everything looks, looks great, and I expect us to, to end with a good, healthy fund balance again. Any questions? Great. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dodge. Mr. Schofield? Thank you, Dr. Brown. Board, it's a great opportunity to be back. Um, got a few items we want to bring forth. I, I want to reiterate before I get started the uh, great job of our Transportation Department on, on Wednesday morning. Uh, it's a very tough morning uh, for our staff, or for that staff, that part of our group. Uh, did a tremendous job, and part of that was because they were very prepared coming in. Uh, and I'll, I'll just say our supervisory staff, our, our our drivers, you know, that first day coming back off a two- or three-week break, and Mr. Johnson's nodding his head, that's the day many buses don't crank. Uh, but our staff had been had, had prepared early on Monday, had contacted all our bus drivers and uh, asked them to, to make sure everything was in proper order. Uh, our, our technicians were out working on, on, on batteries and those type of things. Uh, without that pre-work, Wednesday morning could have been so, so, so much uh, worse. Uh, I just commend them. I was, I was here early on Wednesday, of course. Most days I'm here early. Uh, it was raining. If you weren't up around 6 o'clock, it was coming down pretty good. So just commend that entire staff. As, you know, we talk about our drivers and our monitors, but our technicians and, and staff. Did a tremendous job getting prepared. Uh, next, I'd like Miss uh, Rebecca Thorpe to give us an update on school nutrition and things going on in that department. Good evening, board, Dr. Brown. Thank y'all for letting me give y'all update on what all we have going on in school nutrition. It's been a really busy year for us. We have been preparing for our five-year administrative review. Um, we've known it was coming for a while, and we started preparing for it back in October. We're real fortunate. Uh, Ms. Cindy Chambers is here with me tonight, and Cindy, you know, has been with y'all for a really long time. This will be her fifth review. So she has a lot of experience in what the state is looking for. Um, we're real fortunate. Um, COVID really um, has some negative effects on us in school nutrition, but it has some positive ones because the state learned how to do a lot of things electronically. So where before they would have come in and been here for two or three weeks and drove us all crazy. Um, now we can submit a lot of the documentation online. So we've been busy since October. In October, we started the process. We met with our area consultant. We met with um, the consultant that's going to be coming in doing the review. And we've started funneling all the documentations and the things that they need. And they will be reviewing on the, our entirety of our program. So we started that back in October. We continue to work on it. The three schools that are going to be reviewed are East Elementary, Maysville Elementary, and Jackson County High. Of course, we have a plan in place to make sure that they have plenty of support. The review is going to be the last week of January, January 30th through February 2nd. They'll come in on Monday, spend a little time with us, meet with Dr. Brown, and then on Tuesday we'll get in the schools. We'll spend Tuesday and Wednesday in the schools. Thursday we'll have a time where they get with us and kind of go over for where they think we're at, and then they'll meet with Dr. Brown again and do an exit interview. So our goals for this are to get a good baseline of where we're at in school nutrition. As we're trying to address the growth, every department here has growth going on, and so we do too, and we know that we need to have systems in place so that as we start opening these schools that we're prepared. So that is one thing that I've communicated to our area consultant is this is what we're looking for as we grow, as we stretch. We're looking for a good baseline and then to find out how we can best position our program to not only meet the nutritional needs of our students, but the needs of our school system. We also have 
been very busy in some other areas. Our farm to school program continues. We continue to serve um, pots, beef, and pork to our students. It's such a normal thing now. We don't really brag about it and stress it anymore, but that's still part of what we do every, every day, every week, is serve local pork and beef to our students. So we're still really proud about that. Um, we've had some tightening in our supply chain but we've also been able to work around that and it seems that that has improved drastically this year. So we feel like things have really looked up this year in school nutrition. Our staffing is way better this year than it was last year. So we feel like we have a lot of positive things going on um, in our program and we're really excited to get through our review and continue with the second half of the school year. So thank y'all. Next, so we have some facility updates, and I, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't give uh, Mr. Farmer a lot of credit for having that transportation group prepared, his leadership in that department. Uh, it's been tremendous over the years, the last nine or ten years in that role. He's transitioned July, January 2nd to uh, our director of facilities position, as you all are aware. Uh, he, he thought he was going to be able to take a Christmas break, but we had, a, we had some roof damage at East High, and we had several pipes pipes frozen and uh he was pretty busy over the holidays i'll let him give you a, a facilities update right quick thank you mr Gofield. i think he planned that just to break me in but uh dr brown board i appreciate the opportunity just to come and give you a quick update uh mr clack welcome to our board uh a lot of the things that you see here are things that are in progress i do want to point out one um thing that we're very pleased with we do have temporary heat in some parts of the building so we can continue the interior finishes on those instead of them being delayed due to the cold weather also too uh, the brick has begun on the rear of the building on the outside so we're very proud of that uh, taking place uh, i would be amiss to say that this the cold extreme cold weather did slow it down a little bit on the exterior um, on the block and uh, the brick but uh, we're back in full swing and uh, some of the upcoming planning that we have going on we are getting our uh, requirements for our custodial quotes together for this uh, opening of the school so we can be ready in that uh, area um, some of the other things the uh, glass uh, frames are in and hopefully the glass will be here uh, i believe this this month uh, that is the plan and um, moving forward um, the brick like i said I, I can't help but mention that because it's really putting that final touch on the outside and uh, everything's going well any questions and here's some pictures if you'd like to look at those um, just a quick overview of the entire uh, rear of the school uh, if you go on down you can see the brick already has started and come on up a little bit more and the window frames that we referred to the glass will be put in uh, that uh, like i said this month and just one of the temporary uh, heaters that we have that are being supplied so we can continue your mechanical and electrical plumbing uh, is as you can see overhead is continuing along with the low voltage uh, systems being put in and then the um, masonry being finished uh, in the gym area any questions all right Do dr brown board thank you Got a, I've, got a, I've got an action item we'd like to bring before the board. Um, as discussed in our, our December board meeting, uh, it's been determined that the cost to upgrade North, our current North Jackson Elementary facility is greater than the state funding to replace that facility. So we're requesting uh, the board to approve uh, the phasing out of North Jackson Elementary. Uh, the no new North Jackson Elementary School is in the uh, five-year facility plans that will be brought forth in the coming coming months uh, so be aware of that uh, the current building also uh, it's not not closing it will be utilized for other purposes in the future and of course continue as a k-5 at this time uh, so that we're going to bring that forth for an action item and uh, would like action on Monday on that particular item any questions on that uh, Chairman Hollett, that will be need your signature of approval 
on Monday if possible. Do you mind telling us plans? Do we have plans for that facility? Yeah, I think it's. I think that's down the road. Uh, you know, it's a five-year facility plan, so we kind of foresee that uh, in the future as we are. I mean, as we know, we've approved a, the construction of a new uh, K-5 on on Highway 332. Uh, we've uh, redrawn those district lines. We just know there's extensive growth in the Pendergrass in that North Jackson Elementary area. Uh, it's, it's hard to determine what that will be. Uh, as the new elementary opens in August of 2024, uh, you know, we can foresee that building continue to be overcrowding. And as we plan for a new North Jackson, we kind of feel like it's going to be in the same vein as our other elementaries on that side of the county. Uh, so, I mean, that's the view. We do not, that site has not been determined at this time, of course, uh, and there'll be a lot of planning coming forth in the, in the coming years. Other questions? Thank you. Next item is just an item for information. Uh, with the phase out of North Jackson Elementary, will allow us to move forward with submitting our five-year facility plan to the state for their approval. Their review and approval, they basically quality control our plan. Uh, we've been in touch with them. They're expecting the plan to be received in the next few weeks. It has to be certified by Dr. Brown. So we will anticipate that in the next, uh, I don't know, this week or next week. We'll push those buttons. Uh, but just as an item, the, the processes uh, will be to submit it for them. Once it's approved and returned to us from the facility service unit, we'll compile a, a survey team to visit our schools and to come in and do a, a thorough review, explain our plan. Uh, then it'll come, once they, the survey team approves it, we'll present it to the local board for approval, uh, and then it'll, it'll be submitted to the state board for approval at that point, okay? Any questions on our local? We've been discussing that local facility plan. We also know that we're in ext our extension year, so it's very important to get that to them before April 15th uh, so that it can be approved by June 30th. Okay. Next item is also an item for information. Uh, after much discussion with our administrative team and our, our principals and, and a lot of our stakeholders, uh, our, our parent advisory committees, our teacher advisory committees, these, these, this subject has been broached. Uh, we're bringing forth a proposed start and end times for our, our schools for the year of 2023-24, starting next August. And um, we just want to put it on the table. Uh, it's an item for discussion, basically. We want, we're going to publicize it. We're going to work with Mr. Hooper. Uh, just need feedback and uh, get the conversation rolling about what our start and end times look like. Uh, we certainly believe we've done a thorough analysis of where we are. We know some of our uh, comments that we received through the beginning of this year with our extensive growth throughout the county that we intend that, uh, that we still expect to become, uh, be very evident. We've got to mitigate our traffic patterns. Uh, by doing that, we've got to alternate our start and end times of our facilities in different schools. Uh, of course, this is going to be very important on, on one campus where we're going to have three facilities in two years, so we prepare for that. Uh, but we also we have multiple, multiple schools on other campuses, so it's important to mitigate those traffic uh, concerns through altering our start and end times. Uh, a lot of discussion already, but uh, we certainly are also trying to mitigate some of our driver shortage issues by allowing our drivers to drive multiple tiers. We're already two-tier routing on the west side. Uh, this start and end time change will allow us to three-tier many of those routes, not all of them. Uh, it will allow us to two-tier routes on the east side. Uh, the transportation will change a little because we will transportate on the east side our middle and high school students on the same routing system, which we've done in the past. Uh, there's just a lot of conversation going on there with our transportation team has been going on. Uh, we've certainly worked with them extensively as we've looked at these times and gotten their input and their kind of their follow-up. So as we're looking at this, uh, the proposed starting end times, and like I said, this is an item for information. What we're looking at is our high schools, east and, east and west side, 
Uh, we'll be starting at uh, 725. Uh, it's, it's important for those schools to start consecutively because of the, or at the same time, because of the Empower uh, and those students coming here. Uh, so those, those have to match up. Uh, our middle school time on the, our, our elementaries on the east and west will be at 8.05. Uh, our middle schools on the west side will be 8.45, which is primarily where they are now. But there is a change for the middle school students on the east side to match up. Uh, once again, it has to do with our transportation. A uh, little bit of that, uh, but we felt like that was best for those students on that side of the county. Uh, feedback has been positive from our, our administrative team, our teacher teams, and our parent committees. That These were not necessarily proposed, but we asked for their opinion during many of those meetings. And, and you know, uh, predominantly the, their opinions were, were similar to these proposals. Uh, comments or questions? Our plans are to uh, post this information uh, and receive feedback and possibly get this back to the board for approval. I think it's very easy. It's, it's important for us to be transparent with our stakeholders uh, as early as possible. Uh, it's critical for us to make these changes just due to the things going on in our community. Uh, we, I think we've all got that traffic. Everybody's been stuck. I think this will help us. Uh, also, I'm a big proponent of small children not being at their bus stops while it's dark. Um, currently, we're picking up a lot of students really early. We're also being, tr being very conscious to not have our students on the bus for longer than an hour. That's been very important as well. And we feel like by three-tiering and two-tiering, uh, we can cut down on that ridership number. We'll, we may have uh, routes that not, may not be as crowded. Uh, we're just kind of looking at that. Some some routes will still be, uh, you know, some of our buses will still be at capacity, but others may not be. Uh, so we're we're working on that extensively with our our supervisory team on the transportation group. I, I just like I just like to say that I am pleased to see that we are not so focused on making sure that everything is alike. Mm -hmm in all areas of our system, but mm -hmm. we're meeting the needs mm -hmm. of each individual community, and I appreciate that yes. very much. Thank you. Thank you. And I think Thank these start and end times are very similar to the calendar um, in that we all look at it from our own individual perspective, whether that's an employee, whether that's a parent, or whether that's a student, and uh, really working the perspective that we've had the whole time is let's try to do what's best for our kids um, and what's best for our system and our organization. So we've worked really hard on that. Um, we do expect and would welcome feedback. Um, and, and there are going to be different opinions and different perspectives, just like they're all on the calendar. Um, but through that conversation, that helps us improve as a system um, and continually get better. Because uh, ultimately, at the end of the day, this is about kids and serving kids in the best way that we can serve kids. So. Really appreciate your leadership on this um, and, and Mr. Farmer's leadership as he's worked through these dates and times as well. So um, looking forward to getting feedback from staff as well as parents in the community. Thank you all. I just want to welcome our board members, Mr. Clack, especially there, uh, first time being with us, and, and say thank you to everyone here. Uh, especially you guys out there, um, I, I, I appreciate the time that all you guys put, uh, not only in your in your work days, but also in, in coming to these meetings and, and, and being with us. And with that being said, we stand adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>